Greetings my lovelies and thank you for stopping by the circle today. This month I've kind of decided to take a little bit of a break from the Writing Academy videos. Um, just simply because, well, I'm starting book two of A Tale of Blade and Darkness and I really kind of want to focus on that for a little bit until I get caught up in like what I'm teaching versus what I'm doing because otherwise it like just combobulates my brain. So, plus, it's summer. Why should we not take it easy during the summer? So for next week's video, I thought we would do something a little bit light-ish and talk about some books that, like, really moved me. Like, they, these books have made a, a huge impact upon my life. And maybe you've read a few of these. So let's go. Now when I talk about books that have moved me, these are books that have like either rocked my world, made me cry, or just like fundamentally changed who I am as a human being. So without further ado, we're going to go right off with the gut. Number one, meet Kirsten. Now as any young girl growing up in the 90s, I had an American Girl doll, one of the originals. I had a Kirsten doll and she was a Swedish pioneer um, who came from Sweden, traveled out west. And what these things were is you had dolls, and the dolls had their own series of books, all kind of formulaic. It's like, meet this character, saves the day, goes to school, the Christmas one, and a couple others. Like, usually six in a series went away the character before they started becoming like highly individualized, and my doll was Kirsten. Absolutely love her, still have her to this day. She's in a box somewhere for whenever I have a child. But I was roughly about eight years old when I got Kirsten and the first book, and I read it. And they're very, very thin, like not even like 50 pages. But when you're eight years old, that's a lot. Anyways, so this book ripped my little eight-year-old heart out. I'm talking like Kali Mall, Temple of Doom type of thing, reached in, ripped it out, fried it up, served it on a platter and fed it back to me. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, during Kirstner's family's trip, because they were traveling with another family, and it was her best friend. So as they were traveling out west, her friend gets sick from something. Probably like malaria or dysentery or something to that effect. But she gets sick and dies. As when you're eight years old, you don't have a lot of experience with death, and you haven't read any books with death in it to where like it was like a main character's best friend. Because you've probably been reading like Disney or just like you know little kid books where they're all about you know be friends and be good. And this is like our life sucks. We're traveling to a whole new country, hoping that it's gonna work out well. Oh, and along the way, one of my best friends dies. Holy crap! I ran to my mama and I cried. I was like, she died. <gasps> yeah, it's still traumatic to this day. Although I laugh at it now as an adult, but yeah, that's probably when I knew I was gonna be like one of those readers. The next book on my list is Me Before You. Now I read this book because I kept seeing like trailers for the movie. I had no idea that this book exists, so I was like, huh, I'll give it a go. And so I started reading it because I like to read books before I see the movies so that the movies don't affect the book later because that does happen. See my video on Practical Magic, wherever that may be. One very sweet lovey story. I was like, aww. Yay! You're like, they're getting along. He's experiencing life and she's growing as a character. Love the book. And then I reach the end. And again, sobbing profusely as I'm reading it. And as soon as I got done, I closed the book and I launched myself at my husband. And I am not exaggerating. I launched my ass at him, landed in his lap, caused him to die while he was playing Call of Duty, but whatever, that's beside the point. And just held him and sobbed and kept telling him how much I loved him. And because of that, I have not seen the movie. I have no need to see the movie. Nothing will be as good as that book. So there's no point. Next on my list is Alana the First Adventure. And this is a book, as you probably are well aware of, you have seen any of my other book videos that I feature quite heavily. 
I got this this book in middle school. Actually, I got the entire series in middle school. It's a quartet. I highly recommend it if you have young girls. But this is the book that made me want to be a writer. I read this book and then I started writing. I had always told like stories and like make-believe things up until that point, but this is the book that cemented I want to tell stories right here, that book. It's just the world building was amazing, the characters were amazing, you could grow with it, and even still to this day, I reread the entire franchise. So it's the Lioness Quartet, the Immortal series, Protector of the Small, and the Trickster series. I read them all almost on a yearly basis and they still hold up. I am still noticing things that I did not notice as a child. And they are like stained with like, you know, ramen juice because I loved ramen as a kid and still do as an adult. Even though the packaged ones are not quite as good for you as you would want them to be. But I digressed, on to the next book. Next we have Speak. I can't remember who recommended this book to me, but whoever did, fuck you and I love you. Speak is all about trauma and dealing with trauma and finding your voice again. And through the course of this book, you discover what the main character's trauma is and she sort of heals a bit through art and someone who was using art to handle their depression. I resonated with that. But this book, ironically, left me breathless. I was like, holy shit. Oh my God. It's just one of those books that you close and you just sit there yeah highly recommend it for any older age group and the like when I say older I'm like high school high school to college and apparently they made the movie with a young Kristen Stewart which I have yet to see but apparently it's free on YouTube so I might have to check that out over the summer Next, we have a little bit of a more current one, and it is A Court of Mist and Fury. I love this book. Love this book so much. I am so happy that I stumbled across Sarah J. Mass through the library because I stumbled it through the Throne of Glass series, which I like, but not as much as the Court series. And this one, this book right here, lovely little book, is just, oh my god. A. The most accurate portrayal of frickin' depression I have ever seen in my entire life. Between the ups and the downs and the, just the you wanting to do something and just having the lack of energy because what's the fucking point? And then the rich complex characters, the being pulled from said depression by a mixture of love and support and a quick boot up the ass and just, oh, love it. Love it. Love it, 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 love it. I don't care what anyone else says. Love it! Alright, so now, of course, this book was going to make its way onto my thing eventually. Because, yeah, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is probably, like, this whole series was just crucial to my deformative years, let's just say. I didn't really care for it when it came out because all the popular people were reading it and, like, how could they ever know what a good book was? Yeah, sorry popular people. So I didn't start watching it until the movie started coming out and I saw the trailer. So I had my dad had like the first three of them. So I read the first book and like a day. And then I read the other two before the first movie ever came out. And so yeah, and I just kind of rolled with it. And when I say this book was crucial to my formative years, like I, I guess I started reading it like maybe high school. I'm not quite sure when the movie came out. But I did not finish it until I was in the military at my first duty station in Okinawa. Like when that last book came out, I went to the PX and I got it. And I spent the entire day reading it. I literally did nothing. I read it in the taxi on back to, to my barracks. I was reading it when I back, went back out to my room. And when I want to go downstairs to the smoke pit. And then back and forth. And even when I ordered out takeout, I did not stop reading this book. So from high school, to first duty station in the military, that's a long ass jaunt of years. So, but the Sorcerer's Stone is the one that started it all for me and introduced me to this wonderful world and really just kind of like further urged my writing because I was just like, holy crap, this is amazing. Especially like after I heard that, you know, Rowling had been turned down 12 times and you know, so it really did kind of tell me that it was okay to, not really have it all together right out from the get-go. 
and just keep trying until you find someone who will listen to you. Our next book on the list is Changeling, and I don't know really much anything else about this author. I haven't read anything else about her, but I loved this book as a kid because it's all about finding your place when you don't belong. Because if in Changeling, in case you don't know, is a fae that has been exchanged for a human child, and the fae that was exchanged was a half-breed. So she is part fae and part human, so she does not belong in either world. And at the time that I read this book, I felt like I just did not belong. I was having some issues, a lot of issues at the time, and I really did not feel like I belonged in the world that I was supposed to be in. But then I was like, well, I don't really belong in any world, so where the hell do I fit? And this book just resonated with that and helped to ease my little middle school angsty heart. And I just loved it. Plus, you know, fairies. Next up, we have Isle of the Blue Dolphin. Now, this is all about a young native uh, girl who, for some reason that I cannot remember, is left alone on Village's Island. Like, they all left. I think it was maybe because of a ship that came and just took them all. Anyways, but she ended up getting left behind her on her own, and she survived. Also, by breaking a lot of cultural taboos, like women holding weapons and hunting, and so on and so forth, she did what she had to do to survive. That was awesome. The reason why I added this book to this list because I did not realize it was a real story. I just thought it was an amazing story about surviving and realizing strength that you didn't have, which is always awesome. And then I found out it was real, but made it like a thousand times better. But I read this book so much as a kid that I literally broke the binding in it. And I recommend it to like all my kids. Like, you know, because I'm also a, t I'm a teacher now, and so kids are like, well, what's your favorite book? I'm like, I don't want a blue dolphin. Go read it, because, you know, they can't read a lot of the other stuff that I like, because it's not age appropriate. Next up, we have She Who Remembers. I went through, like, a Native American literature phase, if you cannot tell. I was probably not the right age demographic to be reading this book. But again, it was a gift, and I gobbled it up, and the entire series. Now these suckers are thick, I mean, they're like thick chunky monkeys. But it was truly, really, God, is such an engaging story. It's about a woman with blue eyes, and she's viewed as a witch among her people because she can't get pregnant, and so they drive her out, and her life is just a shit storm for a while. This entire book is her discovering one, A, her own strength, and realizing that she doesn't necessarily always need to have, and that she can dictate her own future, but also her finding her place in her society. Golly day, I gobbled that book up so much, and it was just, I love the story. Loved it so, 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 so much. I mean, it's all about women clawing for a place of power in their society that really doesn't give them all that much. And learning that, you know, men aren't always as they appear, that sometimes they have their own fears which cause them to want to squash women down. And it's just, oh, Kawani's a badass. And she's a very soft badass. She's not like, you know, Ripley or the bride and goes in and like slaughters and kills a bunch of people and is like I am a woman hear me work type of thing. No, she's a very soft badass. You know, she doesn't mind the, her feminine role and she enjoys teaching things but she teaches women that what the men may look down upon them on is actually their strength because they just don't like to admit that women are more important than they are. Because I think the line that sticks with me the most throughout this book is that the example that she uses to explain the girls why women are so important and sometimes a little bit more important than men. Not that I'm getting at like some weird gender things or anything of that of that nature. If all the women in the village were to die, with the exception of one, she would not be able to produce children fast enough to keep the village going. However, if every man in the village died but one, he could impregnate many women and the village would survive because that would again pretend to find more daughters, more sons that couldn't necessarily do anything with each other, but could keep them alive far enough to where they could assimilate into something else. And that was really cool. And I still love that message. You know, you still need both. You still need a man and a woman to procreate life. But we're the only ones that can carry it and make it. A seed is only as good as a land that it's planted in. If you don't value and take care of the land, you're not gonna get anything from it. Just as a land cannot produce anything without the seed. 
So that was just awesome. I love the book. And I feel like I've been ranting for a while, so I'm sorry, we're gonna move on now. And my last book is The Sugar Queen. I contemplated putting Garden Spells on this list because Garden Spells is the book that introduced me to this author, but Sugar Queen, out of all her works, is my favorite. It's all about loving you and who you are and just making space for things in your life and family and what that actually means and all along with the make picture of this really weird magic and I just, it's one of my favorite feel-good books. So when I'm kind of crummy, I read it. So anyways, those are a few of the many books that have just really moved me, shook me up, rocked me to my core, or just resonated with me. If you have read any of, this, of these books, please comment down below and let me know. Also, what are some books that have moved you? Like, if you had a book that just made you bawl your effing eyes out, please let me know, because sometimes you just need a good cry. Or if you think I need to read it because it will open my eyes to a whole new perspective, please let me know. I'm always looking for recommendations, and then I guess I'm a little bit of a, a masochist, sadist, whichever one that is, because I love being tortured by, by literature. So, that is all that I have for you today, and I will see you all later on the circle. Bye!